We're here to welcome uh, Alan Lim, right, to the financial planning conversation. And well, I've known Alan for uh, quite a long period of time, in fact, over 20, 20 years. And, you know, he has uh, struck me as somebody that um, is very passionate in the area of financial planning research, particularly estate planning. And uh, he do things that I, I don't see other people doing. For example, um, taking time to read newspaper every day, even obituaries, and then drawing stories from there, case examples from there, and um, and some of which I've seen before, I've heard him share before, and I find that they are so interesting. And there's a lot of learning points, not only for us as financial planners, right, uh, for our, our users, right? And um, uh, also, uh, these are topics that, you know, you guys as financial planners can bring to your clients and then open up topics to to discuss, you know, the, the financial plans for your clients. So, uh, without further ado, I, I just want to pass uh, this over to Alan. And and the question I have is this: is why, right? Why? What, what's what uh, motivated you all these years, right? Consistently, you know, doing this and and for example, what are the things we can really learn, uh, you know, uh, from the newspapers, all these real stories and even obituaries for that matter. Over to you, Alan. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Samuel. First of all, let me uh, thank Samuel for inviting me into this uh, financial planning conversation. I mean, uh, I'm humbled by this uh, invitation. Well, um, there's actually no big deal about what I'm doing now. Uh, I happen to have a calling when perhaps my strength is in the area of research. All right. But interestingly, uh, this skills of mine, uh, why Samuel said that it's not very uh, uh, common in the financial planning industry, uh, perhaps maybe in the world, is that our financial planning industry hinges on transactional based way of doing business. Uh. As a result, financial advisor from all around the world, uh, they can be very broad based but not very deep. Uh. So therefore, I find my calling is that uh, one central belief uh, that as a financial advisor, you cannot divorce away from the social happening, the actual happening of a person's life, of a person's family. All right? For instance, when a person died, what would be the impact of his finances or his, on his uh, family members? Uh, when a business owner passes away or got himself into a cancer situation, what is the actual financial the capital, liquidity, and the income flow onto his businesses. We could have come to that detail because let me just share with you before I give you one example from my research that I have, which I'm very prepared to share with Samuel and to you. You can talk all you want that you are one of the best producer in the industry, perhaps in the world. You get uh, 10 times TOT in a year. Yes, that's very good. That is product onboarding. You're onboarding the client. But I want to counter ask you this question. I want to counter ask you this question. Your financial plan, uh, who should say that it will work? You might feel offended by my question. But my question is a very genuine question that I ask you. Have your client actually died? Have your client actually got cancer? Have your client actually go through a divorce? Or a bankruptcy uh, uh, notice is served on him or her? Has the risk actually appeared onto your client's life already? Now, if the risk has not yet appeared, uh, you cannot say that for sure uh, your plan uh, 100% will work. Now, I, I, I will be using the same standard in judging my own self, my own financial plan then, the estate plan I plan for my client. Mm. All right? We, we, we can plan to the best of we could. All right? But so long the risk has not happened yet, uh, you cannot therefore say that your plan 100% will work. I will show you some real-life example. So therefore, that is my thought process. Of course, there are two ways of learning. Uh, verifying this thought process. Uh, number one is that I force my client to die uh, and see whether the plan actually works. But that is criminal uh, uh, and that is also not very good. Uh. Yeah. The second most important thing is that we can learn uh, in West Point Academy, the uh, military academy in United States. How come United States military power is forever so strong in the early part of our uh, human in the later part of human history, that uh, things after World War II. Uh. Because last... West Point uh, Academy uh, grew in every of their officers like that, uh, about this scenario planning. Scenario planning. Assume today some country will attack us. Uh, how will we organize ourselves? Mm. Assume our perceived enemy five years down the road uh, is going to appear in that kind of technology. What sort of technology we need to develop today to meet the threat uh, five years, 10 years, 20 years from now? Okay. We go through the scenario planning. So therefore, the only way to learn scenario planning is to study what's happening in the uh, newspaper, what's happening in or the in a way, what has happened before, mm. right? Yes. 
So we right. need to do, know a little bit about history, yes, but also mm. to have a projection mm. about the past because, in a way, mm. uh, a lot of the future is 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 a repeat of history. Am I right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Now let me just show you one example. Let me just show you one example. Okay. I will do a share screen now. Yeah, sure. Of course, I will use actual situation, but uh, if the character happens to be your family members or clients, um, it's just pure coincidence. This is pure for case study. Okay. All right. Now look at this obituary. That happens in uh, 2011. Did I cut it out? His name is Peter Chu. I think he's a great person. Age 84, he passed away. Mm. Now we are financial advisor. We should put emotion one side. Professional 101. Uh, we have to see the facts as it is, not what the fact is ought to be. Number one. And professional 101, number two, we shouldn't judge the client. Whatever life decision the client makes in his own life, but we are not here to judge uh, whether the way he do his uh, uh, family planning, mm. uh, how many relationships that he has uh, is not according to certain moral or what. We put all these things aside. We cannot be self-righteous. Now, you take a look at this case here. He has got four wives. One actually died. Alan, uh, if you three. can zoom in a little bit, that'll be okay. easier to, to view. Okay, can, okay. Oh, can. Yeah. Oh. You can scroll up and down. Yeah. Oh, okay, uh. a little Look bit at Peter Chu. A little bit more. Uh, yes. little bit more uh. Thank you. Yeah, you can scroll up and down. Yeah. Oh. Look at, uh, uh, look at Peter Chu. He has his faith on uh, on the Christian faith, la, all right? which is uh, validated by the uh, Psalm 23 that he put on his obituary. Yep. But interestingly, look at him. Uh, he has got four spouses, four legal spouses. Now, now uh, during his time, this thing is uh, is possible. During his and, time, and hang on, uh, just to mm. stop you a while, we are talking mm. about Singapore, right? Yes, yeah, Singapore. Not Malaysia, Singapore. But this is Singapore. Okay. This is Singapore, no? You find uh, it interesting, right? Uh, this uh, actually happened. Yeah, quite <laughs> interesting because uh, um, I would think twice before sharing this with my wife. La. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, okay. We can okay. go through scenario, scenario. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got some more scenario. Uh. This is quite interesting. Okay. Now, we are, we are not talking about, um, we, we, would, we put uh, uh, judgment on one side. Uh. Who are yeah. we to say that his family relationship is complex? Who are we to say? Hmm. The issue here is that it is like that. And then he has got son, he has got brothers, all right? Now, these are his family members. one. Now, if he did not plan his estate, uh, if he did not plan his estate, uh, that means uh, interstate succession act will come in. As a financial advisor, we're going to study through, wow, if this thing happened, uh, how would the how would the estate flow? Um, he got spouse, all the three spouse uh, uh, will share at least 50% equally among them. And each of the wives here uh, got their own sets of children. Uh, and the children also belong to his own children. Now, for me, you start to plot, uh, plot the capital flow. Uh. It's just a classic example. Our role as a financial advisor, case study, you plot the capital flow of uh, the estate of Peter Chu. You will find that uh, if you don't plan it properly, you don't run through the scenario while he was alive, all right, to plan through how much capital to flow to, uh, say, the son, uh, uh, Edward. Ah. Uh, Say the estate of Gregory, he has got uh, a son who actually passed away before him. All right. Mm. Uh, he has got the third son, Patrick, Stephen, you can see over there. Mm. Right. He can have so many children because he got four spouses, which is possible. Right. Yeah. right. He got great grandchildren. He got goddaughter. All right. Now, if he, if he, if he died in the intestacy, I'm meaning to say that without a will, uh, his goddaughter could be very dear to him. No? Mm. Will not have any inheritance rights or as simple as that. Mm. All right. Uh, if he did not plan his estate properly, uh, his son, uh, Gregory, who has died before him, uh, probably uh, the family of Gregory, his uh, 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 grandchildren, Peter mm. Chu's grandchildren, will not get entitled to any of the inheritance uh, that Peter Chu had. Okay. Now, this one classic example. Now, that brings me to, sometimes you might say, hey, Alan, are you going overboard? You, know? you are studying people's obituary. Are you making fun of people? The issue is I am not. I am not. The issue is, I just want to highlight to all financial advisors in Singapore, Asia Pacific, in the world. What is our role as a financial advisor? What is a client? A client is not somebody uh, that let you sell policy to. You know. A client is a human being. Mm. And behind the client, uh, he has got very fundamentally uh, three family roles that we call to help the client to protect, to express. What are they? For instance, uh, uh, Peter Chu. Or maybe since you are online, maybe I just use me as an example. My name is Alan. 
Mm. I could be a speaker right now on the screen for you. Mm. But I am also a husband to my wife, Linda. I am also a son to my mother. Mm. I got no children. Right. I am also an uncle to my nephew and niece. Mm. I got siblings. Ah. I'm also a brother to siblings to my two brothers. Ah. Right. Correct. So when I pass away, ah, or when I extract myself in a cancer situation, ah, my financial plan, my asset plan, ah, must allow me to express myself and discharge my duty as a husband, as a son, and as an uncle. Mm. If when it, well uh, alive, ah, I told them uh, that I love them dearly. Uh. And when I die, uh, my estate plan must express this love of mine in a very tangible way. Uh. Okay. If I didn't plan anything, uh, maybe my mother will be excluded out of the estate. Give it an example. Mm. Because most of the time we own asset jointly with our spouse. Right. right? Sometimes some insurance policy we make trust nomination. Our mother are out. My mother is out. If I leave my mother zero, what does it mean to me as a Alan as a son? How how do you view me as a son? Mm. All right, we're alive. I tell you, hey, hey, Samuel, I love my mother dearly. I love my mother dearly. Uh. Mm. But if I didn't plan anything, uh, this are mere talk, no. This are mere talk, no. Mm. So therefore, as a financial advisor, our role is to help client like Pikachu mm. to discharge his duty as a husband. He's a husband to a four uh, lady. All right, mm. let's not judge him. He's also a father to so many children. Uh. Mm. He is also a grandfather to so many grandchildren. Uh. Mm. He is also to a, he's a great grandfather uh, of I think two lovely great grandchildren. And mm. he is also a kind godfather. All godfather are kind, huh? He is also a god kind godfather to a goddaughter. Uh. Mm. Can you imagine that if because of money uh, the whole family fight over all this distribution? Uh, in which currently right now we got one very famous case study in Singapore, one noted politician, he passed away. Two sons and one daughter bring out into the social media up to the space. How would how would the deceased feel? How would Peter feel? Mm. You see the part? Mm. But by nature, because we are dealing with money, historically, like, 5,000 years until now, like, nobody likes to talk about money. Mm. In family relationship, uh, you talk about money, uh, usually family will not be the same anymore. Like. Yeah. So therefore, it brings us dying, it, especially right. Yes, yes, it, it brings us one conclusion. Uh, yeah. uh, every family needs to have a financial advisor that is not related to them, uh, and their financial oh, advisor. Sorry, has, I beg your pardon again. Can you every it? family yeah. needs to have a financial advisor that is not related to them. Oh, okay, not related. Not related to them. Okay. Let me explain further. It doesn't mean that you cannot sell policy to your husband, your father, mother. You, you still can. Right. You still can. But I just want to counter ask you la, all the financial advisors in Singapore, Asia Pacific, perhaps in the world. La. How deep can you go? Are you planning for your wife? Mm. How deep can you go? If you found that your wife had got an account uh, that uh, she wants to keep it without your knowledge, because as a lady, she wants to have some sort of security in that account just in case I see. the relationship is not so good. Mm. Or just in case that if she anything happens, she wants the money to go to her parents. And not yeah. to yourself. How would you feel? Yeah. Say you are the financial advisor to your brother and your sister. Like, nothing wrong with that. Mm. How deep can you go? If you do a budgeting, budgeting, like, your brother look at you. Like, hey, brother, you are also the son of our mother. Like. Mm. When I die, you take over. Like, every month, $5,000 you should give to mother. Like. You also earn a lot of money. Mm. How would you feel? Yeah. No, this is a fundamental question. No. Yeah. This is a fundamental question that um it's true, it's true, it's true that research. Uh, yes. Yeah. That uh, means before before the, the event of death happens, mm. these are always very inconvenient things to talk about uh, among yes, of course. Yeah, among, among siblings and even sometimes with parents as well. Yes, of course. It's a bit hard and to even like for example tell my dad, you know, knowing that he's not well, that you know, it's like that have you written a will? It's just quite hard to even open uh you know this conversation, isn't it? Yes, of course. Yeah. Only recent time I can share with you, last week my mother suddenly called me. Uh, I'm into estate planning. Uh, yeah. I'm a noted person in the field of estate planning. Yeah. But did I, did I tell my mother to write a will? Mm. I, I don't. Because yeah. why? I, I'm not to be the beneficiary in a view. Ma. How to yeah. bring the subject out? Yeah. But last week my mother called me, you know. Mm. My mother is 80 plus. Uh. 
uh, after listening to her phone, I put on the phone, I actually shed some tears. Because it's very funny, I mean, as a son, uh, when the mother call you, uh, hey, Zheng Jie, I want to write a letter, I want to write Meaning to say that sometimes, you know, old people, when the times come, uh, mm. they somehow know it. Uh, no. They okay. know about their time coming with you. Know. Mm. All human, we will die one day. Uh. Mm. Why is my mother? No? Mm, mm, mm. When I hear it, of course, as a professional, I have to help her to guide her. All right. Yeah. I also have to explain to her that in writing of the will, I shouldn't be around. Mm. She want me to be around, but I say that it will create potential conflict between me and my the other two brother. And, but me and my brother are okay, no, we are okay. No? Mm-hmm. Mm. But just in case but, if the view do this something, is, uh, this is interesting, right, Ellen? Yes. Because you are in the field, you understand mm. the, the potential conflict, right? Mm. Uh, but but for normal people, right? I mean, if my mom would ask me, I think people will quite naturally just say, "Okay, I will just sit down with you, talk about it, lah." Right? Let's do it, lah. Yeah. Right, if you can, I mean, very good, lah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Like, but, but I'm trying to yeah, point he, about, uh, uh, he has his problems, uh, yes. Yes, I want to point about the role of a financial advisor. Uh, and then I just want to tell everybody that let's be real. Uh, okay. Let's be an advisor of substance. Uh. Mm-hmm. Now, I think, Samuel, you know that I'm very much involved in Chapter Financial Consultant course. Yeah. Uh, I wrote the textbook. Among, I mean, there are several. I wrote one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm the chief reviewer for the estate planning, the business owner. You can see my name is there. Mm-hmm. All right. And I lecture about it. Yeah. Okay. Assess the final students, the final course students, CHO. Mm. Uh, and naturally, I know a lot of advisors, they are studying CHFC. Uh, sometimes they will contact me, ask me hey, hey, how to pass this subject, that subject, that kind of thing. Mm. So my, my, my response to that is very simple. No? Um, some of them even ask me, hey, what should I need to study CHFC or CLU? Or my, my question to them is very simple. Do you want to be a financial advisor of substance or do you want to be a financial advisor of form? Mm. It's really profound, no? No, no, this is the same yeah, question is being asked. That's a very, very, very interesting uh, thing. In fact, I have something mm. to say, but maybe, Ellen, we mm. can stop sharing the screen. Mm. So, you know. Mm. Is, yeah, okay. Yeah, stop sharing. Uh, yeah. yeah. We can okay. actually switch, switch to and fro. Uh, so, okay. when we are talking, okay. it's easier for everybody. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's easier. Okay, uh, good. Actually, sometime back, just recently, in fact, you know, I find mm. that in industry right i mean in the earlier mm. days uh, you know we were known as insurance agents uh, right mm. yeah. that was maybe 20 years ago right we don't have all these mm. titles right and then later mm. on you know financial advisors the word came about and then mm. financial yep. consultants right mm. and then financial con- planners mm-hmm. yes correct i recently have been dwelling on this right what what mm. are the differences advisors consultant sometimes make me feel like uh you know it's like you're sitting there waiting for me to approach you i, I need some advice or i need some consult uh, consultancy, right? Mm. Planner, in a sense, is a little bit different, isn't it? Because the word planner actually is is an action word. It means that mm. really, you have to really take that step and say that you know I'm I'm going to put a plan in place so that all these things you know uh, that we we want to protect against the risk against you know is it, is all in place, right? Ah mm. uh, yes, right. Yes, uh, correct. Over to you. But this, this is just some thoughts, and and, and I think that. Um, uh, in a market, I just wonder, you know, how many real planners are there? You know what I mean? How many real planners are? Mm. Wow. I mean, uh, this is a question. I think it's a hard searching, soul searching question. Uh, we got to ask ourselves. Uh. Yeah. Now, I, I think let, let's go back to the fundamental. What is, uh, what's the meaning of, of, of planning? Uh, planning. Okay. Uh, this one is also from the, West Point Military Academy. No? I mean, my first career was a soldier. La, so it's about military history, one subject we need to study mm. in order to get promoted. Okay, So for practical reasons. Okay, come. Planning means uh, you make certain decisions uh, beforehand, uh, before the, a- the event can actually happen. Actually happen. Mm. Planning does not mean that you can remove the risk. Uh, if you manage a risk, if the risk ever happened. Now, what is the fundamental reason uh, that we are doing as a financial advisor? Two, uh, okay, you die too soon, you live too long. One is uh, in, uh, a premature uh, impact of premature death. The other one is the impact of longevity risk. You live too long. Mm. Right? In between, uh, you could uh, get struck by cancer, disability, yeah. divorce, bankruptcy. Mm. This is what we call special situation. Okay. So therefore, based on this one, uh, as a planner, meaning to say, uh, as a financial planner, 
The word financial means what? Eh? Means you've got to understand this person's financial situation. Starting not from the insurance summary, you know, that one is too narrow-minded already. Starting from his balance sheet. Balance sheet is what? Eh? Asset liabilities. What is his schedule of asset? What is his schedule of liabilities? Mm. What is his cash inflow? What is his cash outflow? Mm. Now, I, I use my words very carefully. You know. I use schedule of assets. You know. All right. I am. I don't like the word balance sheet. Uh, balance sheet is the way that people use. But it's actually for personal financial planning is schedule of assets, schedule of liability. Two things. Okay. Notice I didn't say income expense statement. No. That mm. one is corporate accounting. Many of the textbooks, well, they just copy rock stop barrel from accounting they put into personal financial planning, which absolutely is wrong. You should be cash info, cash outflow. Whatever info they have, whatever cash outflow they have. These two things. Okay. And then the third thing, family structure. We understand the family structure. Mm. So this one form the fundamental uh, basis uh, information uh, financial advisor need to have. Okay, then you go through scenario. Die tonight, disabled tonight, cancer tonight, divorce tonight. What is the various scenario you can think of? Uh, depends on the current situation. Then you take a look at his uh, uh, schedule of asset liability. Uh. If he died tonight, uh, has, mm. has he got sufficient capital income liquidity mm. to discharge his duty as a father, as a mm. husband, uh, as a son? Mm. If he get cancer tonight, uh, does he have got sufficient capital income liquidity? Mm. Notice I use the word capital income liquidity. You know? I didn't use the word asset. Uh, but we got to analyze asset. Uh. Mm. Now, most capital will come from asset. But not all asset uh, can turn into capital. You need to have capital, then you have got liquidity. Yeah. When you got liquidity, then you can have income. Mm. A financial advisor is a person uh, that analyzes your client. Uh, asset, liability, cash inflow, cash outflow, family structure situation, and run through the scenario and see whether if it died, has got sufficient capital, income, liquidity mm. to discharge his duty as a father, as a husband, as a son. Okay. Has it got sufficient to meet the retirement? There's a financial advisor. Mm. Now, I just want to ask, say one statement that is very, is a hard truth statement. Uh. It all points out to a financial advisor need to specialize. Uh. You can't say that you are good in investment, you're also good in estate planning, good in insurance, good in medical insurance. Mm. Um, you're bluffing yourself. Uh. You have to choose uh, some area uh, that you felt is your professional calling and you go deep into it. Uh. The other, other aspects of financial planning, if you are not so good at that, uh, or like some of you might not have the platform to express it professionally. Uh, right? I think you must have the courage uh, to tell the client uh, that that is your limitation. I'll give you an example, investments. Uh. Investment is one area that not many advisors are that good at. Uh. They are very good at selling the investment product. Right. But managing the investment at the time horizon of 10 years uh, and perpetually to have a return uh, that is better than inflation. Uh. Perpetually, you know, that means consistently. You know. okay. I didn't say guarantee, but consistently you must mm. make it. Uh. Mm. All right. And you must prepare to hold a fiduciary duty if that thing don't happen. Not many can do it, you no. Know. Or many can sell. Uh. Many can sell the product very good. Uh. All mm. right. Or you can be very angry at me when I say that. Uh. But you ask yourself this question. Uh. Those of you who are in Singapore, mm. why does government uh, remove uh, the sales charge uh, of CPFIS investment? Uh? Happen. Uh. First October. Mm-hmm. Oh, right now, uh, as a financial uh, advisor, you want to do CPF, uh, IS, uh, insurance selling, or ILP, or unit trust. Uh, your sales charge goes to zero. Uh, you cannot charge. Mm. Why do MOM uh, bring out in the parliament? Remove that area? Pain, no? It pains the financial advisor, no? It even instigated the, uh, uh, not instigated, I, think, uh, I shouldn't use the word instigator, in good favor. It passed out uh, this association tried to fight, delay that um, that policy from coming in. Right. But that's a tactical situation. Uh, along strategy, why did the regulators want to remove that? Simply because based on data, since they liberalized the CPFIS, the client buying the insurance product, ILP, whatever, quite a great majority of them uh, could have been better uh, if they leave the money back into the CPF. Uh. Meaning to say, mm. there isn't much investment planning uh, services uh, being given to the market. Uh. 
Now, I, I'm not being judgmental. Some of you are damn good. Some of you listening here, uh, you, you are doing a very good job in investments. Huh? Some. But I dare say you form the minority. Uh. Okay. All right. I can have an open debate with you on Channel 8 uh, or Channel 5 uh, if you want to uh, dispute this statement. Uh, okay. Great majority don't have. Great majority are just selling the product. Mm. And great majority of financial advisors also they themselves don't know about investment one. Uh, they are very good at selling. Uh. Investment, right. no. Mm. Am I good at investment? I dare not say I'm good, no. Come to investment now, I got another advisor to help me do the transaction thing. I see. I, I, so what, I, I admit it. Uh. So what you're saying is that actually moving forward, right, the mm. market will evolve, right, and mm. have to evolve. Yes. Uh, to the point whereby um, we specialize, that means that we have to collaborate, isn't it? We have to collaborate yes, with of course. Of course. other advisors mm. who yes. uh, are expert in their aspects. Yes, can, so can, can. Rather I, than... I can, Yes. One person to, you know, telling the client that I can do everything, right? Uh, yes, yes. Unless you're telling me that your the watch that you're wearing for 48 hours. Huh? All right. Mm. You also only got 24 hours. Huh? You also have got a wife or a family to take care of. Huh? Now, let me show you one chart. Let me show you one screenshot about what do I mean, huh? Yeah, yeah. One screenshot of what do I mean by this? this. Easier, huh? Okay, come. Okay. Take a look at this. Take a look oh, at this. It's not showing. Okay. Yeah, good. It's showing. Uh, okay. Showing you, yeah. Okay, yeah. come. You take a look at that one on the left. Lah. Okay. This is a broad concept of a financial planning processes. All right. That that uh that formalize uh, or articulate uh, mm. the type of fiduciary duty that is expected of a record of a financial advisor. Huh? Uh, this one is not a sales talk or not something that come up by the regulator or must do. No. Don't 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 please don't. Don't ask me things about hey, compliance or this thing. This is way above compliance. Compliance is just a minimum standard. And this is way above what is the standard that is required of you. Way above to call yourself a professional. Okay? Mm. So compliance, all these are, those are assumed to be inside already. So you okay. must be comply everything. So we should not discuss about that. Those are very fundamental. Okay? We discuss something higher. Mm. Now, why is client onboarding? Client onboarding uh, is how the company judge you. How much business you bring in uh. Your NDRP, COT, TOT, yeah. whatever lah, your bonus lah. Yeah. But that's the part lah, that client actually don't care. No. Client cares about client management and client exit. That red box there. Mm. What is that lah? Oh, that means now the client actually died. Your client actually go through a, a cancer or a mm. divorce situation mm. or business deal lah. Financially, it cannot suit lah. Mm. It's, it's, it's asset protected lah. Mm. That's, that's what client so, uh, a financial advisor got to go through, got to bring the client from onboarding to client management, client exit. Mm. This whole process maybe last 15 years, maybe last 7 years, maybe last for 5 years. Mm. Alright. Now, we take a look at the part on the left. Uh. Because we're on a topic that the financial advisor need to collaborate, uh, financial advisor cannot be good at everything. I'll show you the, 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 the evidence. Uh. The, major, the, the On the left, I'll uh, show you all the, some of the main boxes. Uh of the area uh, that you can so-called specialize in uh, according to your professional calling that's in your heart. Uh. Not what a company tell you to do, no. Not what the what Sunday Times generally tell you that uh, now economy down, uh, you need to focus on debt management. Mm -hmm. uh, economy up, you uh, need to focus on investment. No. You got to ask your heart mm -hmm. what you feel inspired, which one uh, really awaken, awaken your calling. Mm -hmm. Is it estate planning? Trust planning? Mm. Is it plan giving, mm. asset protection, investments, mm. risk and insurance planning, return planning? So, Alan, you see, mm. I, I yes. understand that you also do work in the in the region, mm. right? I mean, yes. uh, you, like Australian, I understand, you know, like Kaplan, right? Mm. Uh, it's engaging you to do it for them as well. So, you, you have also a, an understanding uh, beyond Singapore as well, right? So when you yes. see all this specialized area, right, um, of uh, execution, mm -hmm. is it something that's really like, for example, in Australia? I'm 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 in Australia actually. Yes, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but is is it something really like practiced in certain countries? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Maybe on form uh, they try to uh, but in substance uh, um. I uh, yet to see that. Uh. No, I could be wrong uh, because I did not say that I traveled mm. in every corner of Sydney, every corner in Melbourne, every corner in London. I have not. Uh. But I do come into contact about uh, uh, Kaplan. Uh, Samuel spoke about uh, uh, Kaplan uh, uh, matters. 
we are developing a high level course all right i'm being approached to write one chapter if not one one particular topic of course my specialty is estate planning yeah so i'm writing about estate planning in singapore i refuse to be compensated on that they wanted to i refuse to because uh i just want to free my mind uh, not under any commercial obligation uh, to write in certain direction okay all right so i will write it to what i think of an uh, estate planning ought to be conducted for high network okay all right for a certain institution to to develop that into a course to prepare financial advisor who are largely insurance based uh, to study right. the course to be able to engage a high network client in singapore right. Right. right so now that that brings you the part that hey how come uh, you are getting me to write tell me in your country don't you have subject matter expert in that area right. i find that maybe perhaps uh there isn't much lah. maybe the subject matter expert say estate planning or what come from the legal professional side yeah which yeah. are they are not financial advisor right maybe the investments that come from the investment banker but not the financial advisor side. okay all right mm. The reason I ask this is this, okay, I mean, in the past, right, um, mm. you know, those years when I was a financial uh, mm. insurance agent back then mm. in manual life, mm. that was mm. 93 to 95. Mm. Mm-hmm. But we were just basically selling products, okay. Uh, you know, we I think we have come a long way, isn't it? In mm. the entire industry, there's been tremendous education, certification and all that in the past, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Today, we, we are where we are today, right? Mm. But I, I see the thing that, that you're talking about, this specialization seems to be something that um, perhaps in the far or near future, right? But where do you think we stand today? How far are we from this future whereby our clients will start to expect this from us? They already started. Already started? No. Let me just explain. Huh? Okay. Yeah. I think we, it is not something that somebody create and then we reach that point. It is not. Uh, I think this is the development that right now uh, that is happening now. The pace has been quickened by the COVID-19 situation okay. when everything is being online and it's quickened by the uh, technology that uh, is being developed in not necessarily United States. No. Technology is fast developed in China as well, okay. right? You see all the WeChat, you can use compute, uh, your, your handphone to pay money and all those things. Mm. I was told that in Guangzhou, if you don't have a handphone, now, you, you, you can go out without a wallet. Lah. You can't go out without a handphone. Okay. You, know, yeah. you, you need that to pay money you know, just to eat your noodle, you know, right? Mm. That kind of thing is happening, right? In Singapore, in terms of technology, in terms of the availability of information by the client, and therefore client has certain expectation, therefore client has certain uh, a comparison, all right? Okay. That means whatever you say, I go and Google first, see whether what you say is correct, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Why should I trust you, that kind of situation? Right. It's happening in Singapore right now already. It's okay. happening in Singapore right now already. Now, I have the privilege in my serving in uh, IPAS and then um, in the Asia Pacific side as well. I get to meet some of the best producing advisor. And, and agency leaders uh, in Singapore and other parts of the world. They all display quite similar denominator. La. Those super, pro- let, let's focus on producer, la, not the agency leader, la, the producer. That means uh, they are directly with the client. Yeah. Correct? Uh, the result is what? Uh, they are TOT few times. One. They mean not only TOT, no. they are TOT few times of TOT. One. That's, okay. their, that's yeah. their production. Right. right. We have one from Sanjay from Dubai. I think most of you know him. Uh, we got a few, no? A few, a few in Hong Kong. Very good. Uh, Singapore, I believe, also got maybe TOT two, three times type. Mm. I think have lah. Now these people uh, their processes are very good. And their processes are focused on one or two uh, niche area. Mm. Insurance, estate, or uh, maybe asset protection. Mm. One or two. And I noticed that this top producer, they're very readily uh, to admit uh, their limitation. Ah, okay. Ah, for instance, one of the uh, best person that I ever known in um, estate planning from one of the uh, insurance company, I think. All right. He also, together with me, wrote a uh, CHIT textbook. Mm. 
Mm. He openly highlighted to me, well, hey, Alan, I am very good in estate planning, but come to investment, I'm not so good. Ah, I see. Come, come to investment, share, so I share, actually, I'm not so good. Mm. Mm. Uh, I will get my advisor uh, uh, who are very good at that, uh, but right. to focus on uh, to do that part. Right. But he, he over time on a daily basis, over time on a daily basis, daily basis, study, research, do, get rejected, recalibrate the, 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 the processes, I start yeah. to make it better. I started to think a few years ahead. Wow, this estate planning was going to be a few years ahead, uh, that kind of situation. Okay, okay. Ah. So this is what you're saying is that yes. you know, this very, very uh, um, efficient producers, right? Yes. Uh, the top ones, actually, um, instead of being a, a jack of all trades, right? Mm. They, they master, you know, one or two very specific areas and they take deep dives into yes. those. Yes, basically, right? Correct. correct. The okay. reverse is also true. You can you can go and study a very lousy producer. Mm. The producer is quite bad one. Uh. You, can, you can see he is better. Uh. You will sometimes notice uh, that those not so good producers uh, below, uh, they want to be master of everything. Mm. They do everything. Uh. Car mm. insurance also do, travel insurance also do, everything also have. Uh. Mm-hmm. Everything. Uh. Mm. But yet, they can't go deep in. Uh. Mm. You, you can't say they are they are wrong now also not, not so good yeah yeah in a sense but they're, yeah. they're, they're hardworking no? of course uh, i think it's a it's, it's a di- difference in terms of a business model and you know what some of them want to be la. maybe mm. you know they feel that that is um that is a calling la, because there's there's always also a market whereby you know the people who just want to come to one single advisor to ask them everything la, you know that you know they they, awesome. they might be well served by these individuals you know, they bring back respectable, you know, income put bacon on the table and all that. But I think I think what you're saying is um is interesting because I, I did not know that about the top producers. In fact, a lot of our users, right, in HQ, um, HQ being the client engagement system, uh, are aspiring producers, really. Um mm. for us, we target we target the ones that um that believe that financial planning. Uh, is about walking through different life stages with their clients, uh, mm. you know. And I think if that that is what they believe in doing, and that that's what they articulate with their clients, right? They set a certain expectation, isn't it? They have to fulfill this. And um, when you say walk through different stages of life, I think uh, the scope is really wide, isn't it? So uh, yeah, I, oh, I yes. do see your point. I do see your point. You, you can't be good at everything, right? Yes, correct. Now, uh, let me just rephrase the thing. Uh, maybe a little bit unfair for me just not make a statement. Uh, I'm not saying that you should give out your general insurance license or what. Yeah, no. Yeah. Let's think in this way. I think this way. Uh, I make things simple. Uh. Say you are aspire uh, to want to have uh, 100 clients uh, of aggregated investor uh, inside your portfolio uh, in the next three years. Very specific. Okay, I want to have 100 accredited investor. What? Accredited investor, uh, they make 200,000 and above. They got a uh, network of investable. Uh, asset about two million, that kind of thing. Uh, high net worth, uh, right. maybe entry level high net worth people. Uh. Mm-hmm. Say you aspire to one hundred of these uh, in the next twenty four months, for example. Mm-hmm. This part here. Then it's a very good start to think through. Uh, this group, uh, what is a problem? What sort of a job or business they actually come from? Mm. And then now uh, you design uh, your product based on your platform. If you are a tech insurance agency based on your your platform, uh, okay. What are some of the products uh, that are suitable for this group? Uh? Mm. If you are a general insurance person to get, if you are a tech insurance advisor together with a general insurance analyst, then you begin to think, hey, what are some of the general insurance products of this group one? I'll give you an example. Uh, in my own experience, I come across. Uh, the client asked me, you know, hey, Alan, um, I want you to go and tell me, uh, research uh, ransom insurance, mm. kidnap insurance. Mm. I didn't know this insurance exists. So, <laughs> so yeah. I go and ask my, my general insurance expert. Uh, but tell me, hey, Alan, this one very common now, uh, God. Actually got there. Wow, uh-huh. then I go so excited. I go and study. Hey, what is this, man? Actually got. Let me tell you the client profile. Uh. The client is super high net worth. A uh, noted family in Singapore. Doing business in Singapore and East Asia country. Now, he is in the process of passing on his businesses to his son. The son mm-hmm. is not young. The son is about being 50, oh, my age, oh, 50 plus with him. Mm-hmm. All right. The son got one issue. Uh. The son like to talk. The father uh, is very worried that because he likes to talk uh, and then he offends people. Uh, 
Okay. And in some country, uh, they solve problem uh, not in a very civilized way. Uh. Yeah. So he got money, ma. The family got money, ma. Kidnap him, no. Yeah. All right. So therefore, the father want him to be insured, not because of the money. That that means if he got kidnapped, ma, uh, the insurance policy will pay certain money, lah. Of the but ransom. The, yeah, yeah. The, the for the ransom. Okay. But not so much for the ransom, uh, because the insurance policy also got one benefit, eh. They will also uh, get in touch uh, with one of the top negotiation firm in the world to help you uh, to negotiate with the kidnapper. Ah. Uh, uh, to, to engage their service not cheap, no? It's not the kind of hundred dollars per hour one. I think right, right. project base can be yeah, yeah. one million dollars US. For my uh, FBI negotiators and that sort of I, thing. I, I think so. Yeah. I, I, I don't know the identity. Like, if I need to know, yeah. I think they will kill me. <laughs> yeah. uh, that the insurance policy uh, provide that service, okay. no? Uh, it is right. that service uh, this this matra of family he needs. Uh. Yeah. Uh, you see, so so therefore, for that group, uh, they need a home insurance, not our HDB AIG type there. Mm. A home insurance is a bungalow. Uh, I said the bungalow is worth say, 10 million of content. Mm. All right. So your, your home insurance policy uh, is not one two hundred dollars premium per year, that kind of package you you don't show. It's not. It's mm. big time, it's very really huge. Yeah. So if you're prepared to go into that kind of thing, you must be prepared to say, okay, general insurance, okay, mm. high net worth, what they need. I go and study about it. Yeah. Okay, for high net worth, in terms of ILP policy, uh, what are the ILP policy relevant to that? I do. Right. What's the medical insurance relevant to this group mm. of people? Maybe they see medical treatment, uh, not only take MRT from Papayo mm. to Orchard, uh, which is what, what Grand Eagles or Maui. They could mm. be flying, assume COVID is over, uh, they mm. could be flying from Singapore, say, to uh, uh, Baltimore in United States for some specialized medical treatment. That kind of thing. Uh. I see. They need that kind of okay. So as an advisor, you have to study and talk right. and aim for it in a very systematic way, ma. Not because the company tell tell you do no. Mm. It's because you felt that hey, I think uh, I want to be there. Yeah. All right. I will up my skills, up my knowledge, up my contact, up my structure. Right. Like, like the structure that Samuel is having, uh, All right. A structure that you have, uh, to help you uh, to deliver a system, uh, mm. Not only one off, lah. Uh, consistently doing that uh, day after day, year after year. Do until you succeed uh, for the hundred. Uh. Mm. That's the part. Uh. Mm. That's what the future is going to be. Uh. Yes, yes. I think that's what the future is going to be. It really is future because I think um times always change, uh, am I right? Uh? It doesn't, yeah, doesn't wait for us, uh, right? So yes, of course. The, one of the purpose of uh you know we have this financial planning conversation with Alan Lim is because um we, we are big believers, uh, you know, myself, you know, I regard myself as a futurist. I do a lot of research on not just technology, but, you know, things like uh, AI, you know, what's going to happen? How does it, how is it going to affect our business, you know, our life and all that kind of thing. So, so I think, I think what is interesting here is that, you know, the, the role, going back to the role of advisors, right, Alan, mm. right? Yep. And, and knowing that all these things are going to change, right? The market mm. and the expectation of the clients are going to change. Then what, what must we do as advisors, right? Uh to prepare better prepare ourselves and then to position for this for this future, right? So um very good. We we actually talk about some interesting um uh, real real stories, right? Um so expanding more a, little, a bit more on on the role of uh, financial advi advisors, right? So this future is really starting to happen, but in fact, on the ground, I don't really see uh, advisors really jumping into areas of very deep specialization, right? Um, okay, so I see that you are bringing out another screen. I show you, I show you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, okay give us a bit more insight, you know, about mm. if, if I'm an advisor, I see, mm. I understand this future is here. In fact, it's, it, what you're saying is that it's not coming, like maybe five years later. It's already here, am I right? It's already here. It's, it's already here. Already. So we have to begin to start to think about this and then and then do something right yeah mm -hmm. over to you now, now why do i say it's already here i think some of you your agency leader you feel the situation also yeah. your advisor is getting reckless now mm. all right they wanted more things some of you fight that you can't really support the kind of situation now let, let's take look at this part here just try to um, formulate our thinking the future or what uh, I, i'm just Samuel asked me to for uh, 
introduction. I, I just I told Samuel, I'm just a normal human being breathing the same air as everybody else. Yeah. Now, I think I like to exist to see financial advisors thrive in this industry, uh, not just merely to survive. Thrive, okay. uh. Yeah. Meaning severe, you make an income uh, good enough to make you an accredited investor yourself. Mm. 300,000. Uh. You make 300,000 a year. That gives you confidence. That gives your wife confidence. That gives your mother confidence to you as well. All right. Now, just take a look at this part here. These are the trends that's affecting you and your client in Singapore. Uh, actually, I started this research uh, 2016. Every three months, updated it. All right. So this one was uh, as at uh, 20th September 2020. I got another one October one I'll show you later. Mm -hmm. All right, take a look at this part here. The demographic, the matrimonial trends, the economic and business trends in Singapore, mm -hmm. geopolitical situation affecting Singapore. Okay. Now we are we're living longer. Life expectancy living longer. All right. But um, yeah, we are living longer. You can see. Men are uh, 82 years old. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, our health adjusted life expectancy is uh, 72, no? maybe 73. Uh. What does that mean? You take 82 minus 73 is about 9. That means uh, um, I learned myself, or maybe even uh, Samuel, uh, we, we will live la last 9 years of our life uh, in a severe disability situation before okay. we go to heaven. Okay. Uh, we are financial advisor. No? So uh, do we have uh, the sufficient capital income liquidity uh, in our retirement years? That part of it, the retirement years. Yeah. So the kind uh, of visa. Sorry, Alan, can I interrupt you for a while? Uh, yes. If you don't mind, uh, you can bring back the previous slides. Oh, uh, can, can, can. Yeah. Mm. So what you what what I see here, right? Yes, mm. trends affecting uh, you mm. in Singapore, mm. two one six and beyond. Am I right? Mm. Oh right? uh, yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, are you are you saying this affecting? Us as in the consumers or the 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 uh, everybody, everybody everybody including the everybody. advisors things to yeah, pay yeah, including, including the advisors right now. Ah, so yes. you, you break it up into four items, four ah. segments over here, ah, right? Yes. Demographics right. and property trends, matrimonial, family structure, ah. Ah, economics, yes, right? Mm. And, and geopolitical. Mm. Uh, yeah. Very very interesting. In fact, I think this is one of the things we can do because in the interest of time, right? We we have about Another maybe 10 minutes, okay? Mm, okay. Yeah. I think it would be very interesting that, you know, um, you can take deeper dives with us, right? And maybe for now, for today, right? You can actually just talk about the demographics and property. And then in future sessions, right? We can mm. actually take deeper dives into mm. um, some of the other areas, right? And there's mm. so many items to, that, mm. that you have okay. actually done here, which is very interesting. Yes, okay. And including geopolitical thing. In fact, um, in HQ, we, we believe in this topic so much that uh, two years mm. ago, mm. Uh, we started this estate planning conversations mm. seminar, right? Mm -hmm. And last year, um, mm. we actually invited um, a professor actually to talk about mm. geopolitics and the impact mm. you know, on, on, mm. on our mm. estate planning, you know, mm. on, in financial planning. Mm -hmm. uh, at first, people were wondering why, why geopolitics, right? Mm. And shortly after that, right, oh, you know, the trade war happened, COVID happened and all that, right? And mm. we see... Mm immediate impact on everybody. So that, mm. that's another very interesting thing to dig into. And I know you research into those areas. Mm. Okay. So uh, over to you, but uh, you can perhaps tell us more about, you know, the, the first item on the left, right? The more graphics. Okay, yeah. I'll talk about the first item on the, on the left. Because yeah. uh, I'll show you this slide because Samuel, you just asked me that you have a new financial advisor, where do I start? The kind of yeah, situation. Sure. Yeah. Now, uh, these, these are facts. As I mentioned, just now, I'll repeat again. As a professional, we have to see the facts as it is. Not yeah. the fact that what it ought to be. Uh, what we whether it's good, <laughs> good facts or bad facts, uh, yeah. we plan around it. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We've got to articulate the truth. We, we should not be sugar coating things or bitter coating things. Absolutely. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the same data can be used by, say, if you aspire to be a politician, uh, if you aspire to be a businessman, or you aspire to be an army general, or you take a look at all this. But we are a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. So when I look at all this trend, uh, I step back and ask myself, if my client now uh, is coming from the shrinking family unit, that means uh, husband and wife, no children, but got elderly parents, that one. What is these clients are uh, estate planning, financial planning, retirement planning situation? Okay. And that's how, how we as a financial advisor make use of this data here. Okay. Uh, so another thing is that uh, how, how is it gonna be affected by all these uh, yes. all these trends, right? 
Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I'll give you I'll give you one example. Maybe I'll take the, the, the second one, the family trends. Uh. There's one part on uh a non-traditional partnership. Yeah, cohabitation LGBT example. No. Okay, okay. If a man and woman they decided not to get married, uh, mm. they stay together uh, uh like a family unit like that. Uh. Right, right. So we got to step as a financial advisor to help to this client to think through uh, that if the man uh, died tonight, disabled tonight, critical illness tonight. Uh, what is the estate planning, financial planning, retirement implication uh, of this couple uh, that is not legally married? For that relationship? Uh? Uh, yes, of course. Not legally because, married. Uh, the uh, not, not legally married. Uh, in, yeah. in a relationship, uh, they yeah. could joint, jointly go and buy a house together, uh, jointly take a loan together. Uh, I see. But if one party dies, uh, the other party got no inheritance rights uh, because he's not a legal spouse. Uh. I see. All right. Uh, this thing happened to those same gender relationship uh, mm. uh, or, or just normal men and women, uh, but they just don't believe in the marriage institution. Uh. It see. can happen. So as a financial advisor, we're not here to judge, neither are we here to discriminate or whatever, uh, or yeah. encourage something like that. We are not. As a financial advisor, we see, okay, this client, he's coming from a shrinking family unit mm. and he's only alone. What is estate planning, retirement planning, financial planning implication? Mm. Then we study on their part. Uh. Uh, what are some of the products uh, that he can put in place now uh, mm. to prepare him if the risk ever come? Mm. I'll just give you an example. Uh. Uh, uh, me and my wife, uh, I got no children. Uh. Me and my wife. Uh. Mm. So uh, I am greatly impacted by shrinking family unit. Like the one on the left, you see. Okay. Right now I'm still okay now, earning good income, the kind of situation. Things are rosy, got, as, got a little bit of assets here and there. What if 20 years from now, I'm closer and closer to my mortality? I'm 70, mm. my wife's 71. And what if uh, uh, my wife is in the wheelchair? Mm. If I don't that have sufficient that, capital. Uh, that means that if your wife is in the wheelchair, right? You probably don't have the children that will come around. And yes. Ah, assist I you like, with all the day-to-day -day yes. living you know, yes. matters, right? I don't have that. No. Samuel will have no. Samuel, you will have no. You got children. No. Oh yeah, but you know, you know oh. what? You know what? I mean, I think, mm. I think the the there's a change in terms of expectation as well, right? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> my, my parents' generation, our parents' generation, they 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 say that the more children you have, you know, the more you can <laughs> people to depend on now when you need diversify. <laughs> I think these days, I mean, it's a very real, real conversation. Me and my wife, right? We talk about this, right? We have three daughters, right? I think. I think we'll call it a bonus, uh, right? If they are independent, right? They they, they don't come and, uh, you know, uh, burden us, right? Even after, I, I just realized that, you know, I have neighbors, I see stories. It's like uh, the concerns never end, uh, right? So mm. they can be grown up, they can have their own family and all that and still still become a financial financial burden and all that. Uh. So I mm. think the, there's also a shift in terms of how all these trends is affecting uh, new families, right? Yeah, of course. Compared yeah, to, uh, no, no. yes. Yeah. Yes. But I, I, I'm not as putting an expe uh, expectation on whatsoever because uh, yeah. it comes to the actual situation. Um, at least in Samuel's case, let's assume, let's just uh, give a hypothetical assumption. Uh, yeah. That because you did not plan properly of the long-term care situation, you are in wheelchair and yeah, you are 80 years old. Yeah. At least you've got certain hope uh, that your doctor can come to your rescue uh, to give you a dignified send off. Uh, Maybe from estate planning, you'll be paid. you return back to them. It's, uh. it's, a, it's a hope, uh, right? Uh, it's a hope. Want to impose but, on them as well, but, right? but, but, but for me, uh, I don't have that hope. Uh. I don't even have a hope to begin with. Uh. No children. <laughs> Unless. Uh, no, no children means no children. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. Unless you have a god. So, so, a son uh, or god. Uh, <laughs> uh, that kind of thing. Uh. Okay. <laughs> Another thing I want to show you an example about this trend, uh, right? Is increasing price of property. Now, I was um, being called to help out one association about and a government ministry to write about something uh, to help youth in Singapore uh, to plan their finances. All right, we put on YouTube and all those things. All right. Mm. Um, the project already over, the work already done. You can see on the website, on the e -E website. Uh. Mm. Well, I writing the content. I got data from the National Youth Council. Mm. They tell us, no, 
what is the increasing worry uh, of a youth? Youth means 35 years and below. The thing yeah. aged 18 to 35. Uh, marry or not marry doesn't matter. Yeah. What's your aspiration? What's your fear? Mm. From the financial planning point of view, uh, yeah. The aspiration is to I want to buy a property of my own. Ah. But the fear is that I don't think I can be able to ever to be afford. Oh, that's very different, right, from our generation, right? Yes, and there's a legitimate thing. It all impact, you know, that's why we got low birth rate because getting later to get married now. Because in, I remember uh, in our generation, yes, like you, you're quite sure you can actually get a property, right? I mean, after you get married. Yes, correct. Yeah. correct. So, so we are financial advisor. Now. So based on this, this aspiration, then we go back to us. Like, okay, how can I access the client? Now? Maybe just plus up from university one now. Yeah. And reasonable, uh, say work five years, work six years, that kind of thing. Uh. What mm. savings plan he or she need to have mm. together with his uh, girlfriend or boyfriend mm. with the intention to get married type. Uh, uh, okay. Save up some some money uh, right. for the down payment. Or if ever I need to borrow money from parents, which is nothing wrong. Mm. Borrowing money is okay, no? but make sure you return. Uh. You don't yeah. borrow, don't return, then that's bad. Yeah. You, you incur the debt, make sure you return. Yeah. All right? You, say, say you need to tap on your parents' retirement fund to help you set up family because for the down payment and whatsoever. Mm. Have some plan uh, and plan towards it with some reasonable expectation. Uh. Mm. With the fact that we all know that the property price in Singapore is going up. Like. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, that is the thing, no. That is a clock, yes, right? Yes, yes. And it's not spending time complaining uh, this, uh, that, uh, that kind of situation. Yep, yep, yep. I think that shouldn't be the case. Now, that, that is what we mean by we have to understand the threat. Yeah. property aspiration so therefore the, if so, uh, the, uh, uh, so for, for me at least the takeaway right i mean it's like uh if we understand this trend it, what it yes, means is that you you are able to open up even more relevant conversations isn't it some, real, of, some of these things real, the, the the incumbent themselves the client themselves don't even think about it right because they they don't know the trend right it's a it's a real these are real conversation now yeah. i want to counter ask financial advisor or what is your own financial planning like? Mm. Uh, is your own financial planning situation uh, mm. in good order? I did not say you have to be wealthy. You know? mm. I say that is your is your debt well controlled? Yeah. Mm. Uh, is your cash flow the way you own your asset, the way you own your liability? Do you have a plan uh, to systematically accumulate assets to discharge your duty? No, not 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 accumulate assets just to show off. No? Mm. A clean asset like to start a family, to give security to your loved ones mm. in a very gentleman way, in a very mm. realistic way. La. Nothing wrong with staying HDB, you know, there's nothing wrong yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you have it? Yeah. We all come across financial advisor because first year next six figure income or wow, immediately increase increase our lifestyle. Mm. Without knowing that next year they're going to pay their CPM, Medisafe, and and what income tax. So they get into cash flow problem. So mm. perpetually you need to chase another client to solve your own financial planning problem. I, I think yeah. I think some of you listening here, I think you know what I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah. Right. So so I, I think I think the the takeaway, you know, for for this, I find this very interesting. Uh as we discuss more about the different trends, right? Mm. Uh it gives us that context, uh, right? It gives us mm. that awareness, right? Because without that awareness, we can't even talk about yes, these topics, right? And and what you're saying, of course, is that you know we we ourselves as the if I'm today that young financial planner, oh, yes. aware of these things that are happening, not only now, oh, yes. in the near future, yes. you know, right? Mm. And, and order myself accordingly, and then you know, become that example, right? Or at least I can share my own story, right? When I sit down with the mm. client and then you know, relate mm. to them, yes, correct. Right? Yeah. So I think we have come to you know uh, we have actually. Uh, these sessions uh, that we, we're, we're having uh, is going to be, um, it's not going to be just one session. Right? We have, I, I'm very happy to collaborate with Alan, um, someone that you know I, I greatly respect, right? And because I've, tr I've actually tracked him actually, actually, uh, you know, uh, not not to not to kidnap him lah, you know, but I've been watching his work, you know, and we, we just find that um, our path kind of crossed at a very interesting time. Lah. In fact, we. Um, uh, he has been quietly and very consistently doing all this research. And then, you know, for me, I've been building all the technologies, you know, supporting the financial planner, right? So 
um, moving forward. Okay, there looks like the way I look at it, there's so much things to talk about, right, Alan? So uh, we we really look forward, right, to the next uh, sessions, and um, uh, we will take deeper dives into some of these things. Okay, but uh, before okay. before we we leave, right? Um, mm. Okay, Alan, just two days ago, you actually shared with me about an article, right? Um, about okay, just give me a moment. Let me bring that up. Um, yeah, and this is something that is, you know, is really happening just right before our eyes right now. Um, okay, let me share my screen. Okay, can see my screen. Huh? Mm. Yeah, remember, yes. Alan, you, you sent this over to me and mm. uh, I was asking you, right, mm. um, what this is really going to mean, right? Because mm. there were talks also in the market, right, with, you know, people that uh, COVID is really unprecedented, right? It has actually, you know, caused our government to come up and and you know, uh, withdraw from the reserve several times within a very short period of time, right? Mm -hmm. And you were saying that there are actually deep implications as well, right? To to financial planning, right? And yes. how uh, we, we, as advisors, we need to know this and and so we can be in a better position to uh, to advise our clients, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in the next session that we have uh, two, week, two weeks from now, we are doing this uh, session with Alan Lim, Financial Planning Conversation, um, once every two weeks, okay? And then it's a recorded session. So once we edited the video and all that, we will post it uh, in our YouTube channel, uh, you know, for not only for HQ users, but for all the financial planners and advisors mm. uh, uh, to look at this. And hopefully we, uh, this will inspire you, right? Um, to better yourself and, you know, for your clients as well. And uh, and in fact, if it inspire you to really be that expert and, and take deep dives like what Ellen does, then, you know, I think there's a lot more for everybody to benefit, right? Okay, so um, so this is to give you guys a heads up, right? This will be um, the next topic that we are going to talk about. Just give us a, a little brief, Alan, right? Uh, how important is this? You, you mentioned about a couple of impacts, right? All right. Yeah. I send this to a couple of my students, uh, the CHID students, yeah. right? I just want to... Give you this scenario, huh? Samuel, assuming you're a financial advisor, you're in Bangkok right now attending an international conference. Your host uh, in Thailand asks you, hey, Samuel, can you go out to the stage uh, and uh, in three minutes, uh, can you introduce your country to us? Can you introduce Singapore to us? Mm. Now, how would you introduce Singapore uh, other than got good food, shopping, yeah. or some other leisure? So we are financial advisors, therefore we have to understand Singapore from the financial planning perspective. All right. The reason why I share the article is because uh, COVID-19 has caused Singapore government to draw out 100 billion or committed 100 billion from the past reserve. Okay. Uh, we have to understand what Singapore is. We don't have natural resources. Uh, what we have is a vast reserve that back up our currency so that the currency can be stable in order to purchase energy, food, maybe medicine, even water. Yeah. No. If ever, if ever, uh, too much of a reserve is being taken out. Uh, if ever the Singapore currency is not being backed by assets, which which could happen, mm. you will find that our currency will weaken, mm. inflation will shoot up, things will be more expensive. Mm. As a financial advisor, perhaps for this COVID nineteen, we have to highlight to our client. Uh, it's about time right now. You have to adjust your fi retirement planning, uh, the financial goals. Uh. Right. Right. So what we, have to that we, what we thought that mm. is enough might not be. Nah. Yes, correct. So we have some uh, geopolitical understanding of what Singapore is. Good. It is. It is. The, the fact what Singapore is, is not what it ought to be. It is. Right. Right. We are so, not exactly strong. We yeah. are not exactly that weak as well. Mm. But as a Singaporean, I think it's very, very basic that we have to understand what our country is. All right. Okay. okay. And then make the best use of it and... Uh, keep the place going uh, on this part here. We cannot right. assume that things will be rosy all the while. Yep. That's what the article is about. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so thank you so much, uh, Alan, for mm. spending the time with us, you know, having this conversation. Right. And uh, uh, a little bit of heads up to you guys again, you know, uh, why are we doing this in HQ for Headquarter Client Engagement System? Mm. Uh, is that we, because of the, the belief that we have, right? Um, there's there's so many things to talk about, like AI and all this. What is what's the impact and all that kind of thing, right? But the large overarching uh, 
uh, direction that we are moving in and what we really believe, uh, you know, is that we have to continue to look towards the future and change and position ourselves. And, and we believe these are the, the topics to, to really dig into in order to be uh, relevant. Okay, so, um, so in the next session, Alan, um, you will give us a little bit more about this particular topic, right? Okay, and, um, and, and also um, you can expect us to have this session for the next three months at least. Uh, the, so far, what is being planned, uh, every two weeks we'll have a session like that. And, okay. and this is actually leading towards uh, HQ. We are planning right, to have this uh, long-term collaboration with Alan. And I also understand uh, that Alan has got one of the largest repository of case studies right, uh, that he has accumulated over the 20 over years. Okay, And HQ, uh, we, we, we would be that platform to, to help host all these contents. Uh. You know, I mean, jokes aside, like, I think that uh, this is, this is uh, what I've been urging Alan, uh, right? To, to also plan, right? Because all this um, wonderful knowledge uh, that he has uh, and, and all these assets that he have, have um, accumulated over all these years, right? Uh, we want to make sure that you can survive him, a form of estate planning, all right? And we <laughs> as industry can continue to uh, benefit from, uh, from his work, okay? So we, we look forward to do quite a few things, okay? So uh, I'll, I'll disclose more details uh, in the future sessions, mm -hmm. all right, okay. or on our website. Right. And um, and yeah, so uh, we'll just wrap up for today. So thank you so thank much, you. Uh, Alan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, yeah, look forward to putting this up on 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 rec on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you again, Alan. Okay. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. Bye -bye.